The Omicron variant surge appear, appears to be peaking in the east and leveling, leveling off here in the western U.S., but we have seen more hospitalizations of children than any other point in this pandemic. It's very concerning. UC San Francisco infectious disease expert Dr. Peter Chin Hong joins us live to talk about why the potential FDA approval for the Pfizer vaccine for children five, under five and, and under is just so important right now. Doctor, thank you once again for joining us this morning to Talk about this. My pleasure, Melanie. This is a really important topic. I think it's given a lot of parents a lot of anxiety and waiting. Yes, and you know, I have a personal connection with this. My sister and her husband both tested positive for COVID. And they have two young boys in the home under the age of five. So they're terrified that their children are going to become infected with COVID. So this is big news for concerned parents like them who have kids in the house and they are exposed to the dangers of COVID. Exactly, and we've seen this anxiety play out in many, many ways from the holidays to bringing kids on the five to visit grandparents. They're just recently over the last few days, Lunar New Year, when it's really traditional for elderly folks to co-mingle with uh, all generations. But I think this put a damper that anxiety on those gatherings. Right, and I think a lot of parents also are questioning the if there's a potential for a booster shot for children under the age of five, because now we're talking about a potential vaccine and the two dose vaccine for kids. Is a booster shot on the horizon? Yeah, I think the, the doses will settle at three for everyone. And for those under five, it seems that the two doses uh, gave an antibody response, but it wasn't quite as good. So they they're hoping that a third shot would be the magic bullet. Um, right now, I think they're still waiting for data of the third shot, but the two shots look very safe. And I think that's what the FDA is going after. It's safe and also we're still in the middle of a big uh, number of new cases per day, more than 2000 deaths in the United States today. So I think that's the sort of, um, you know, asking the, that Pfizer bring this data earlier before that third shot data. And, you know, it, things like this, it creates a kind of a divide on both sides of the aisle. So you have people who are for this for children under five, and then you have people who say, you know, this goes against um, what we believe in, you know, being forced to do this. What is your reaction to, you know, the division that this is creating? Well, I definitely hear the, the both sides. And on one hand, you want to make sure before something is accepted as part of routine childhood immunizations that you have enough data. But on the other hand, I think, um, you know, there are many vaccines that we use in schools to keep the environment as safe as possible. And if you have to think about the outcome, which is to try and make this an environment that parents feel safe sending their kids to, I think, you know, that will be the debate. But at the end of the day, I think you definitely want to have enough data before making this a requirement. And how young do children have to be when they get, you know, their measles shots, their, you know, their tetanus shots and things of that nature or, you know, the mumps shot? Well, that's a great question. So it really starts off uh, really at month one, um, but six months is kind of when many of the vaccines are given. Just like in the COVID vaccines, uh, they're going to be uh, approved eventually for kids as young as six months uh, of age. So that's what we'll be seeing. And of course, school requirements at age five, are, you know, ushering another set of vaccines. So that's what uh, the routine is. So I feel that eventually after the dust settles, the COVID vaccine will be a childhood immunization vaccine. The adults would have been very immune at that point, uh, having seen waves of infection, but the new kids coming up wouldn't have seen anything. So they need to get protected. Dr. Peter Chin Hong, thank you so much again for talking to us about this very important subject. Uh, it'll be interesting to how this all, to see how this all plays out. So